Hi everybody, welcome back. Tony again here with Shinsho Yoga. And for this week's video, I'd talk, uh, like to talk about a concept in spirituality about never owning a disease. And this goes further than spirituality. Uh, it goes into basically any type of energy medicine or any type of holistic or natural medicine. All of us in the world have issues. All of us, to different extents. Um, it just depends on whether or not we want to identify as that issue and make that who we are, or if we want to make that as just part of something in our life that we work with. Uh, what makes me bring this up is the conversations I've had with some people recently, uh, some family, some friends, talking about their challenges with concentration and their challenges with focusing on what goes on. And two of the people I talked to, a friend the other day specifically, um, I had said something to them and they were like, well, you know, I'm a, I am fidget to this and that and I can't sit still. And I said, well, I said, maybe uh, you, should, you should look into meditation, try meditation. And they got very defensive and they said to me, uh, I can meditate anytime I want, anywhere I want. It's just, I, I, I can't, uh, it's my problem is ADHD. That, that's my problem. And uh, I've heard this a lot. Now, I was diagnosed as a boy with ADHD when I was probably, I don't know, second, first or second grade, uh, to the point that they wanted to medicate me. Right? They wanted to put me on, at the time, Ritalin, uh, which my father wouldn't allow. He's like, you're not medicating my son. And I'm glad that he didn't allow it. And my childhood studying and in school was extremely challenging. Uh, I was called a daydreamer. I was always looking out the window. I was either doing one of two things. I was either looking out the window or I would cause some distraction in class, right, because I couldn't sit still. Um, I would often get notes written home uh, from the teacher to my parents. Tony is not doing well in his class. Tony is failing the class. Tony doesn't pay attention in class. Tony's always looking out the window. Tony causes distractions. And the distractions, of course, would always get me to detention. I was often in detention. Or oh, when I was a boy, they used to have to make you write out a hundred times on a piece of paper things like, I will not talk in class. I don't know how many times I had to write, I will not talk in class, I will not talk in class, I will not talk in class. The same as you see in the beginning of The Simpsons. Uh, depending on your age, if you're my generation, you probably know that. Uh, any generations earlier than that, I don't think they did that anymore. And I always had to have tutors to help me with my classes. And I ended up taking classes in the special education room. So with kids who had things like Down syndrome and, and different levels of, of, of mental handicaps, I used to have to take classes with because I was so doing so poorly in class. And barely graduated high school, barely. Got out by the skin of my teeth. I had a teacher that actually wanted uh, to fail me. Many teachers that wanted to fail me and hold me back over the years, but there was always discussions and such and such, and uh, this teacher wanted to, but then I had actually gotten a scholarship to go on to technical school at the time, uh, so she decided to just pass me and let me go. Once I got out on my own, though, things changed for me, and it's not that I outgrew this issue that I had. I decided, I decided to no longer allow it to control me. I decided that who I was was in control of, was I was in control of, that nothing else was in control of me, that there was no entity or there was no outside thing that was an affliction that was going to limit me, right? I was going to choose to be limitless, right? And I decided to take, <coughs> excuse me, control of the issues that I had. And that's what eventually led me to these practices, to leading to yoga and meditation to still my mind because I have, as we say in Zen, a uh, monkey mind like most of us have. I can be all over the place. Sometimes it's very easy for me to focus in that I have learned, especially in like a position like this where I'm teaching students, I can focus relatively well. If there's tons of distractions, it can make it challenging. But if I don't have distractions around me and I set up my classes so I don't, and I can focus because I'm on and I'm, I'm there. Uh, if I'm just in a group setting with people, I have to work hard at it. My mind will wander. My, I will get distracted. I have to pay attention. I have to very, very carefully pay attention when people talk. Otherwise, 
and my mind just will float away. But I choose, choose to do that. It's not easy. It's hard. But I choose to not allow the disease, if you want to refer to it as that, the affliction to control me. It doesn't mean that when I say it, it's like Thanos snapping his fingers and it goes away. I have to work on it, and it's hard. But I choose to work on it, and I choose to not allow it to control me. Same goes for a physical limitation or affliction. I am an asthmatic, born that way, since I was a little boy. And many times it has been very challenging for me. I um, twice as a child almost died from complications with my asthma and had to be hospitalized and get adrenaline needles and the like. Um, with that, it's made physical activity very challenging for me. I was a poor, not only poor student, but a poor athlete because my lungs just didn't have the capacity. Well, if you've watched these videos before, you've heard me say I am a surfer. I'm a regular surfer. I'm an avid surfer. I surf all year round here in New Jersey. How can someone with asthma surf? Well, it's not easy, but I do it. Are there things I can't do from it? Sure, there's things I can't do. I, I don't ride the really big swells because I don't have the lung capacity to be held down on a wipeout. That's what it really comes down to. If I wipe out, which is a surfer you're going to, I can't be held down underwater for extended periods of time. My lungs just don't have the capacity. I'll drown. So I have to ride smaller waves, but I don't limit myself to that. I slowly work up and build up and build up, and I do many things, including these practices and many holistic health practices to get my lungs to work better. Right. Mentioning being a surfer. I have two death fears in life. One is heights. I get very freaked out being high up. It's not the height, it's the falling part that freaks me out. The other is drowning. When I was four, I almost drowned. I was at a, a day camp for kids, and they had a pool, and they asked me, four-year-old me, can you swim? And I didn't even know what that meant. All I know is if you said no, you didn't get to go in the pool. And I wanted to go in the pool. So I said, yes. And I went in the pool. And, well, I just saw there was a rope there that was separated the pool. I didn't know why. There was kids on the other side. So I went on the other side, and whoop, right to the bottom I went because I couldn't swim. And I remember looking up and trying to say help and the bubbles coming out of my mouth. I began to panic and then I saw a hand come down, I remember it to this day, and grab me and pull me up out of the water. I don't think the water was all that deep, probably five feet or so because, you know, this was a pool for kids. But it was the deep end of that pool. Needless to say, for the rest of that camp, I was no longer allowed to go in the pool. So... What's someone with a death fear of drowning doing surfing? Once again, I do not allow it to control me. That doesn't mean there aren't times out there that I haven't absolutely gotten scared and be like, oh my God, this is bad. And a lot of times when that happens, I leave, I get out of the water. If I get to that point, I go, I'm getting out. But again, I work to manage that fear every day with the practices that I've learned, the monkey mind that I have, right, from the ADHD, right? I don't even call it that because I don't own an illness. Never own an illness. Never give it any power. Never say you are this. Never let it define you. Yes, you can have that affliction and it can cause you issues, but it does not mean that you have to allow it to define you or allow it to limit you. Yes, there are going to be limitations as you go along, but if you say, because, for my example, because I'm an asthmatic, I'll never surf these waves. I don't say that. I say, because of my asthma, I can't do that right now can't do that right now and I work towards it and I work towards it and over time it's gotten better and better in that category I'm getting bigger and bigger waves that I can ride right? it may limit me right now but I don't have a limited mind when it comes to it I do not allow it to say that this is only that never own a disease it doesn't mean you don't have it it doesn't mean it doesn't affect you do not give it power do not define it. Do not say that that is you. Do not make that your identity. Right? Be limitless. Not limited. 
And that's what these practices are dear to do, to help you with that. To help you overcome those things. So be limitless. As always, take from that what serves you. Get rid of the rest. That doesn't mean take what's comfortable and get rid of what's uncomfortable, because we often need what's uncomfortable to serve us. That's all I have for this week. Thanks again for watching. Namaste.